applications. And this is the last section that's going to be covered on your test. And then after that, we'll do a quick review for your exam. So you have a test on Monday in this class. And uh, here are uh, our main topics. So I think there's more application problems in your homework, but I'm not going to go over them. So if you could just, uh, if you really, really get stuck on something, you could send me an email, I'll try to answer, or work, you know, try to move you through the, the problem. But in general, I think uh, a lot of those are, are really based on examples in the book. So you can just look in the book and take a look at the examples. But I'll do a couple of them. I'll do the allocation of resources and graph using nodes. And, and then I want to go over the game, the lights out game, <coughs> and show how that uh, linear algebra can apply to that. OK, our first uh, problem is an application um, dealing with the allocation of resources. So let's, let's read through this and see what it says. Suppose that in, uh, oh, there's another example somewhere else. Four hundred units of food, uh, four hundred units of food A, six hundred units of food B, and six hundred units of food of C are placed in the test tube each day and then the data on daily food consumption of bacteria are shown in this table. Uh, how many bacteria of each strain can coexist in the tube and consume all the food? So what we're interested in is uh, we're interested in amount of bacteria for um, of the different strains. And then uh, we're going to place them in some tubes, and they're going to eat uh, some certain amount of food A, B, and C. And then we'll see how that works out. So let's, uh, let's start off by assigning variables to some of these things. Let's call of bacteria of strain 1, X, and then Y, and then Z. This reminds me of a TED Talk that I saw. I don't know if you guys watch TED Talks, but once in a while I watch it. Um, there's this woman who gave a presentation, and she was concerned about in, 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 in death, you know, a lot of people get put underground and and uh, in in the coffins and stuff like that, or cremated. And she thinks that it's doing this method of dealing with death is is kind of a a strain on the environment. And so, what she wanted to do is she wanted to cultivate mushrooms that would eat her after she dies so that it wouldn't leave much of a trace of her, you know, in the smoke and ashes or in a big wooden coffin and stuff. And so she's training mushrooms to, like, eat her body parts like hair and nails and skin and stuff. And so... What is this? <laughs> Anyways. What is this? I'll put a link to the to the TED talk about this. I just this this problem reminds me of uh, of that talk, how a strain of mushroom is being trained to eat certain kinds of food. In this case, you know, her fingernails or her hair or her skin or something like that. <laughs> All right, let's get past that. I'll try <coughs> to get past that. So the idea is that to, to, uh, to eat up all the food A, and it looks like there's 400 units of that, of food A, um, we're going to put um, a one unit of bacteria strain 1 and 
two units of bacteria strain two and then no units of bacteria strain three. This is uh, 2.4, 5. Something like that. And then we got uh, 600 units for food B and 600 units for food C. So essentially what we have is for food A, uh, you have one times uh, bacteria strain one, and then you're going to add on to that two times the bacteria strain two, and then you're not going to contribute any of the third type of bacteria. And then you want this to eat up <coughs> uh, 400 units of uh, the first type of food, food A. Okay? So once you get that going, then I think the rest of this com should come easily. And then the 600 of food B, and then for food C, 1, 1, and 2. So 1x plus 1y plus 2z is equal to another 600 units for food C. And then now you have a system of linear equations that you can solve for. Um, yeah. You can, but since there's three variables, setting two equations equal to each other would may or may not work so easily. So uh, we'll set it up like this and just go for the surefire where, way that we've been working on, right? Turn this into an augmented matrix and then row reduce. <coughs> so this becomes a uh, 1, 2, 0, 400. Uh, 2, 1, 1, 600. And 1, 1, 2, 600. So this is your augmented matrix, and all you have to do is solve for this. Can I, can I, can I trust that you can solve for this already? Row reduce, you know, multiply the first row by negative 2, add it to row 3, and stuff like that. So assuming that you could do that, I'm going to put it into Wolfram Alpha so I can get an answer. So the first uh, row is one, two, zero, four hundred. Second one is two, one, one, six hundred. And then the third is one, one, two, six hundred. And then so this does the reduced row echelon form which we really don't need, but you know, it'd be good if we, if we were to go all the way with a reduced row echelon form, then we can get the answers without having to solve or do any back solving. So now that it's in reduced row echelon form, we can just get those values directly. So your x is going to be 160, your y is going to be 120, and then your z is going to be 160. Okay? R-R-E-F, reduced row echelon form. <coughs> okay, questions? By the way, R-R-E-F is the actual command for MATLAB, if you didn't already know that. You would know that if you worked on the project already. But. <coughs> okay, so that's, uh, that's one application. 
And when it comes to applications, you know the hardest part in applications is setting up the problem. Once you set up the problem, the math becomes easy, I hope. <laughs> or at least the math goes to the computer and then it becomes easy. But your, your, your mind is needed for the setting up part. Because once things are set up, then you can just ask the computer to do it. That's how it's going to be in the future, I guess. Huh? But it's important that you know a little bit about how these things work. And so you should be expected to row reduce maybe at most a 5 by 5 matrix um, on the test. But I don't, I don't know if I'll have you row reduce something that big. So the average would be about a 3 by 3 matrix. <coughs> All right, any questions? Okay. Uh, now let's uh, take a look at another application. Using uh, nodes. So I'm going to skip over the chemistry stuff. And another really common use for uh, systems or making up systems in linear algebra is is looking at uh, a graph with nodes. Now, whether that be, in this case, uh, looking at a network of pipes or, or uh, a truss, truss, is that what it's called? You guys know engineering? When you build a bridge, they got these points in the bridge that uh, determine the number of, uh, the amount of force for each of those joints, and those joints are uh, graphed as nodes, and then figure out how much force each node uh, can take as, a, as an important part of engineering. <coughs> so here's a network of pipes that go through, and then we have one, two, three. We have three nodes here, <coughs> and then uh, so we're looking at the possible flows, and they tell us, they give us flows for some of them, some of them going into a node, some of them going out of a node. Uh, but in general, we, we're, each node can represent uh, an equation, a balanced equation. So we can think about uh, a node going in as uh, positive, a node going out as negative, or vice versa. It doesn't matter, because when you set up the equation, you'll set up the equation and bring everything to one side. So let's uh, let's take a look at how each of these things will get set up. So let's say for A, we have 20 going in. So let's make the ins positive. 20 is positive. And then um, uh, we look at the going out as being an equal amount. So let's just say F1 and F2. I was going to put them all on one side of the equation equal to zero, but if we do it this way, uh, the idea behind these pipes is that amount going in should be equal to amount going out. So this is what we have <coughs> for node A. For B, uh, we have uh, 10 and F2 going in, and then F3 going out, and then for node C, we have F1 and F2 going in, and then F3 going out. <coughs> now that's F1 and F3 going in. All right, so we have a system. Linear equations, and we can just write that a little, just a little bit neater, um, with f1, f2, and f3 equal to 20, 0, f3. For the first equation, for the second equation, we'll bring uh, the f2 to the other side, so this negative f2 plus f3 is equal to 10, and then this one, f1 plus f3 is equal to 30. So we can rewrite our system to make it look nicer and then rewrite it to make it look nicer so that we can 
easily translate that into uh, a matrix. Uh, 1, 1, 0, and 20. 0, negative 1, 1, and 10. 1, 0, 1, and then 30. So with this, we can just, again, row reduce and then solve for the optimum uh, set. Maybe I'll, I'll use free math for this one instead of Wolfram Alpha since I'm going to expect you to, to be able to punch this in. So I'm going to start off by calling my matrix A <coughs> 1, 1, 1, 0, 20. And then when I want to start a new row, I put a semicolon. And then I have 0, minus 1, 1, and 10, semicolon. And then the last one is 1, 0, 1, and 30. And if you, you know, if you type in a command and then you type enter, you get the output and then you can suppress the output if it gets really big with a semicolon. So here I can see my output. This looks just like the matrix I'm looking for. And so REF is the magic command for that. So if we row reduce this, it looks like we have a whole row of zeros. What happens when you get a whole row of zeros when you row reduce? We have no solution, we have an infinite number solution, or what? Yeah? What? Infinite. We have an infinite number of solutions. So we get a free, what's that called? A free parameter, free variable that we would set as something as t. All right, so let's get our result here. Row reduced. So a row reduced form looks like th yeah. Nick. Oh, what's the rank uh, if what's the rank of the original matrix if this is your row reduced form? Rank is two. Let's let's do this with a different color. Just as a little side note, rank is two, and so. Rank of two, what does that mean when we have a rank of two? I say if the rank is less than uh, the number of vectors, then you have an infinite number of solutions. So there's going to be a lot more theorems relating those ideas of rank and the number of solutions. And then actually, we're going to pull away from studying systems of linear equations and focus on matrices themselves as, as themselves their own creatures, their own, their own entities. And then uh, there's a lot of theory in matrix algebra and matrix manipulation and, and things like rank and stuff. And then, of course, we'll, we should always be free to go back and refer them back to systems again, since that was our original <coughs> motivation for studying matrices. All right, so the rank is 2, uh, which is less than 3, less than the number of uh, vectors that we start off with. So we know that we have an infinite number of solutions. Let's see if we can identify them. So the whole row of zeros uh, is, becomes insignificant for us. And then if we refer this back to F1 and F2, we have our system looking like um, F1 
plus F3 is equal to 30. That's the first equation. F2 minus F3 is equal to negative 10. And so this is your free variable F3. And we'll let that equal to T and then see where we go from there. So if F3 is equal to T, then F2 uh, is equal to negative 10. Is it negative 10? Negative 10 plus 3 plus T. <laughs> and then F1 is equal to 30 minus, minus T, right? Mm -hmm. Just T. And now that it's written in order, I'm trying to be careful now to write it in order. <laughs> now it's written in order, we can say our F1, F2, F3, our solution is an infinite number of solutions. And we can put different values of t there to get the, the many infinite number of solutions we have. Uh, this is equal to a constant vector. plus t times a direction vector, and direction vector is negative 1, positive 1, and positive 1. Yeah? Well, the, the t is the arbitrary variable, but you know, in this in this scenario, and this is the, the, these are the questions that they're going to ask of us here. I think uh, we're going to have to choose the correct values for t to be able to answer the questions that they have. All right, so part one or part a is to set up and solve the system to find the possible flows. So here are possible flows. If you let t is equal to zero, for example. We can have uh, F1 flow at 30 whatever liters per minute. And uh, F2 go backwards. That's weird. Go backwards. Uh, backwards flow for F2 uh, of negative 10 liters per minute. And then actually just shut off F3. Because that's I'm, I'm doing this when t is equal to 0, for example. <coughs> So let's see if we take a look at this. Uh, if the flow through AB, this is AB right here. If the flow through AB, that's F2, is restricted to 5 liters per minute, what will the flow flows of the other two branches be? So to answer that question, this is part B. Um, F2 is going to be, make sure that this is the right direction, from A to B, so that's a positive number. Uh, and they want, I'm sorry, I keep moving up and down, uh, 5 liters per minute. So they want F2 to be equal to 5 liters per minute. Uh, then what would the flow for the other two be? So what we want to do is we want to isolate F2 here. So F2, according to our solution, is minus 10 plus T. And we want to set that equal to 5 liters per minute and solve for T there. So whatever value for T we get, we'll put it back into this and then solve for F1 and F2. So T is 15. So when t is equal to 15, t, by the way, is not necessarily time. That's just a parameter. So let's put 15 in for t. So then f1, we'll get 30. Uh, this is a minus t, right? And t is equal to 15. So it's 15 liters per minute. That's the flow for f1. And the flow for F2, or F2 is already 5, so the flow for F3 is going to be 0 plus 15, which is just 15. So they're both 15 in, the, in those cases.
right? Okay, so what are the minimum and maximum flows for each branch? And what's the last one? We've been assuming the flows are always positive. We already talked about, uh, well, actually, this is in a negative flow. This is, oh, yeah, when t is equal to 0, we get in a negative flow. Uh, so that's kind of like part D. All right, uh, well, minimum and maximum values, possible flows for each branch. So let's take a look at branch A. And that has the uh, equation uh, 20 is equal to F1 plus F2. <coughs> hmm, how do you minimize and maximize this? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about <laughs> derivatives, but there's the derivatives doesn't make sense. Yeah. No. <laughs> How would you figure it out looking at the graph? So I just put zeros in for T? Maximums and minimums. Yeah, so if, if I was trying to see if there's a, a, a reason to use matrices for these things. And When you shut off, when you say you shut off F1, you're saying that F1 is now is going to be equal to zero. It has no flow this way, so that means F2 is going to be equal to 20. Um, I don't know if you can just substitute zeros in for the matrices. So how many levels would you add? Would you add just one level or three levels? Well, we have F1 and F2 and F3. Right now we have three. Hmm. Multiply? Well, so if F1 is equal to 0, that would that be another equation, or can we use the same system here? I don't know if we can use the system. Well, let's, let's stick with the, trying to look at the graph and see how the flow goes. And, and assume that F1 is equal to 0. So if F1 is equal to 0, then I don't know if that's still going to guarantee the maximum or minimum. And then this whole backward flow also is going to be another issue. But maybe it won't be an issue. So if F1 is equal to 0, what does that mean? That means 30 minus T is equal to 0. That's what F1 is equal to. And then so that's t is equal to 30. And that'll give us the flow for F2 and eventually F3. Well, that's, that's the thing is that uh, I think 
because of this question over here, they're making us think that we, they want us to think that those flows should all be positive to begin with. So anyways, when t is equal to 30, then f2 is equal to Thirty. Uh, F2 is minus 10 plus T, which we said was 30, so that will give us 20 liters, and F3 will be 0 plus 30. So if you shut off the flow for F1, then you'll get your F2 will be at 20, and then your F3 will be at 30, which means the flow would be 30, the flow here. Yeah, I guess just put zeros in for F1 and then for F2 and then for F3 and then you'll figure out the maximum and minimum. All oh, right. So that's 10 going in and then you have a backflow for F3, yeah. No, I don't think so. I think it's still linear because it's still just dependent on F2 and F3. All right. Well, I'll I'll leave that. <laughs> I'll be done with this. <coughs> okay. Uh, let's let's take a look at another application, and this is a this is a game that I've been wanting to show you guys for a while now. So let's spend a little bit of time on that. And it's described in your book. Um, the the actual game, if you guys were here early before the class started, there was an actual grid, and so that's that's uh, originally what the game is about. And so it turns out that the, the game that we're going to look at in, in a little bit more detail is, is uh, instead of a two by two grid, or instead of a, instead of a grid, it'll just be a, a, a line. So we can take a look at the vector, uh, vector portion of it instead of uh, the matrix portion of it. But let me show you how the game lights out works. So I guess there's an actual game, a handheld game, where you press buttons and stuff, and that's a five by five. But for simplicity's sake, let's start off with a three by three. And the idea behind this game is that when you press a light, that particular light will turn off or on, and then the other lights next to it, uh, left, right, above, and below it, would also turn off or on would toggle back and forth. So whichever button you press, um, those things will turn off or on. And then, so now we're going to try to turn this off. I think the trick is to start here, and then here, and here, and then here. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know how to play this game. Ooh. <laughs> so maybe you want all the lights to be on. <laughs> uh, let's see. There. <laughs> so we're going to simplify this game to just looking at a row Uh, 
instead of uh, Hollum. Is six too much? Let's do a uh, five. Yeah, six doesn't matter. So the same same uh, same rules. You want to try to hit as many of these things until the light disappears completely. <laughs> Successfully play the game. So let's take a look at this game. This uh, <coughs> this game starts off. Well, first of all, let's let's establish one thing about this game. Uh, it, it's the lights are either on or on or off. So I'm I'm living in a finite field now. I'm either zero or one. So I'm in Z2, right? So does that make sense? We're in Z2. So we're in Z2, and I have a vector that kind of looks like this. And so the vector is kind of uh, it, it's it's written here. It's uh, one 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 zero one zero. So let's start off with this scenario and see if we can do our linear algebra business on it to, to able to, to try to solve for this with as least number of clicks as possible. The least number of clicks as possible. So they, they, they tell you how many turns you're taking to do this. Uh, and so we want to minimize that to win the game. <clears throat> so if we click this first light, what we're doing is uh, we're going to turn this light on, or we're going to toggle the first and second lights, and then the rest of them don't change. So Clicking on this one light, it's like uh, it's like adding this one one zero 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 vector to this to this original state, right? Now let's take a look at that one 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 zero one zero. That's the original state, and then if we add one one zero 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 to it, we're gonna get one plus one is what? Zero. <laughs> one plus one is zero. One plus zero is one. Uh, zero, one, zero. So this should be our new vector, right? Oh, we can double check on that. Let's see. Let's go back to the game and let's click on it. Let's click on the first one. And then we got the vector zero zero one zero one zero, and so that's displayed over there. Okay. Now, if we click on the second light, uh, the first three lights will turn. Will will toggle. So the first three will toggle. And then everything else won't change. Because uh, whatever whatever you click on, uh, that will change, and then the other two will also change. What? No, it will all change between light on or light off. So I can't undo this, go backwards. So let's just add it to this thing. So if I do one, 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 zero, 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 if I add that to the current state, I would I should get zero uh, I should get one one zero zero one zero. Right? So let's let's go ahead and take a look at that in our game. Let's click on the second light. And that would give me 
a one one zero zero one zero one one zero zero one zero. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to establish a handful of these vectors. How many vectors are we going to have? We're going to have six vectors, as in six possible things to click on. Maybe six was too big. So if we click on the third vector, it's going to be the third, ve the third spot, the second spot, and the fourth spot that will change. And then the first spot will not change. Right? And we can figure out these other basis vectors or these other click vectors, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And then if we click on the last one, only this one and the one next to it will change. So there's only two, two changes. Okay? So if we started off with the original state and you just click on them one by one, it's like adding one of these things. So I'm going to, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to erase. I don't like erasing things here. But I'll erase this stuff. So basically what we want to do is we start off with this vector, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. We start off with this vector. And the question is, how many times should we click the first vector Let's call it A. How many times should we click on the first vector? And how many times should we click on the second vector? And then how many times should we click on the third vector? Fourth. Fifth. And then the sixth. And remember our goal is to have this come out to zero. So what we end up here is a big system of linear equations that we would need to solve for. All right? So let's try to solve for this. You know, I, I would write this into a system and then make it into a matrix again. But you know that these things end up being the column vectors, right? of the matrix, columns of the matrix, except for this thing that needs to go on the other side. So if you bring this all over to the other side, we need to subtract that. How do you subtract in Z2? We need to add something. What do we need to add 1 to to get 1 on the other side? Right? To get 0 <laughs> on the other side. You need to add 1. And so that's this basically this vector is going to be on the other side. So let's uh, let's make a vector out of this or a matrix out of this and do the reduced row echelon form and see. Um, again, I'm going to use this. It's a lot of those vectors, huh? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build build these vectors of zeros and ones and then make them into columns. So I'll I'll call them vector I'll call them vectors first. So one, one, two, three, four. So that's my first vector. I'll call it U one and then U two, U three, etc. U two is equal to one 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 zero zero zero. 
u3 is equal to 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. I'm putting semicolons. I'm putting the, the prime to make it the transpose. I don't know if you guys remember that from your um, pre mat. <clears throat> Wait. I did U3. U4. What happened? Oh, I wrote my. Uh, U4, by the way, in MATLAB or in FreeMAT, if you press the up arrow, you can get the last command. And so you can just change whatever you need to change. So U5. And U6. So I can put them together into one uh, matrix. I'll call that A is equal to uh, just put the U1s, U2, U3, U4, U5, and U6 together. And your matrix should look like this. If you look at the columns of this matrix, it should be exactly these, these click vectors that we have. All right, <laughs> now we want to append that with this, uh, with this matrix. Let's call that a vector B is equal to, and this is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. And let's take the transpose of that. So uh, my matrix AB, let's call it AB, is equal to uh, A and B. <laughs> okay. Now let's row reduce it. Oh, I need parentheses for row reducing. And then I get uh, 1, 0 stuff. All right, so let's, uh, let me copy some of these things on our notes so that we can have some understanding of what happened. <laughs> Do you guys have any understanding of what's happening? No? Oh, bummer. <sighs> so each of these columns from the matrix is uh, one of those vectors that we would add if we click it. And so this is U2, and this is U2. You can see that those matrices match up. This matrix over here, we'll call it the B matrix, is this B matrix over here. So this is the augmented matrix. And then we do the row reduce form of that. This actually got split up, but that's actually good that it got split up. It's this thing. And then this column, which is the last column. So this is the row reduce form of this matrix. You can see that all ones over here 
and then these are the values that we get. Now, I didn't stay in Z2 because I have negative signs, but this negative 1 in Z2 is essentially positive 1. So what we have here is, uh, is A is one time. So I need to click the first button once, and I skip over, I click the third button, the fourth button, oh, first, second, third. <laughs> I click the fourth button, the fifth button, the sixth button, and that would give me all the lights out. Uh, does it matter what order you do it? That's a good question because what if I click on that last one first and then the first one? It turns out that we're adding all these things and addition is commutative, so it doesn't matter. All right. <clears throat> now let's see if I can get that original vector back. I have it randomly. Oh, it's not going to come back that way. I need to force it to look like that. Okay, so how did I start that game? So what was my initial matrix again? What did I want? One, one. I want my initial matrix to be one 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 zero one zero. One 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 zero one zero. All right. So this is my initial state. What did I say? I need to click on one four five. So if I start again, uh, one, zero, 1, 4, 5, 6, if I click on 5 and then 6 and then 4 and then 1, it should still, it doesn't matter what order it is. So now I have my master key. One, two, three, boom. Okay. That's cool. Well, if <laughs> well, yeah, you could play this with a friend. Uh, you could say uh, whoever gets the lowest terms to get lowest turns to get lights out will win, and then, but you would have to do your linear algebra off to the side, right, <laughs> to make sure that you get the right answer. Yeah, you can free mat it. Okay. So the, the, the next thing to consider is that what if instead of just turning it off and on, it turns off and then it turns yeah, kind of medium and then it turns on. <laughs> so instead of being in Z2, we're going to be in Z3 just to make it a little bit more interesting. So let's make this a little bit more interesting and go to Z3. So now in Z3, I have off, I have on, and I have really on, or whatever you want to do this, however you want to do this. Uh, so th this off could be zero, and then the semi on could be one, and then the other on can be two. So this vector would be two, one, zero, zero, two, two. So the question is, can we play the same game and approach this the same way? And what's happening here is that we're essentially in Z3 in a toggle. So if I click on this first slot over here, this red light will actually, since this is a higher intensity, in the next toggle, it'll turn off. So this, is, this should turn off, and then this yellow-orange should would turn red. So let's see what happens. So this turned off, this turned red. Now we have something that's off completely off. If I click on this, this will be turned orange-yellow, and the ne next to it is off, so it'll turn orange-yellow also, and this one is red, so it'll turn off. So 
So if I click on this, that's exactly what will happen. So now the question is, what clicks do we get, do we take, a little bit more difficult here, to, to have everything turn off? All right, so let's start a new game and let's have this as our scenario, one, two, 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 zero, zero. So this is another version of lights out, but now we're just dealing with vectors and we upped it up a notch by looking at three instead of two. So this is a, a one, a two, a two, a two, and then a couple of zeros at the end. So that's my initial state vector. And what happens if I click on the first one, that'll add one to the first one, it'll add one to the second one, but it'll leave everything else alone. So this would be one, one, this would be zero, 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 zero. So it, it kind of looks like the other one, right? And in fact, it is just like the other one because instead of toggling on and off, you toggle 0, 1, 2, and then 0, 1, 2 again. So we can think about these vectors, these click vectors, as being the same vectors as the other one. So we can set up the same game, except now we're in Z Z3 instead of Z2. So the question is, we want this to be, uh, what do we do with 1, 2, 2, 2, 0, 0? How many times do we click on 1? And how many times do we click on 2? to get all the lights to go out. All right? So that's the same situation. It's the same matrix, almost the same matrix, except the thing I want to do is I want to bring this to the other side of the equation, the equal sign. So if I bring this to the other side of the equal sign, I need to know some uh, finite math algebra here. What do I need to add 1 to to get 0? I need to add 2 to that, right? So the opposite of this is 2. What do I need to add 1 to make it go to 0? I need 1, 1, 1. And then the rest of them are zeros already, so I just won't touch them. So that's the opposite of this vector. All right, let's, uh, let's have our free mat do that. So A, the matrix A is still going to be the same matrix that we had earlier, so we don't need to change that. Our B matrix will change though, so our B matrix now will be 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. And then, uh, so if we do RREF of AB again, uh, we need to know what AB is. So RREF of AB. We got some negative signs, so let's just adjust that later on uh, or We'll, we'll get our answer. Let's take a look at our answer. So this is our solution.
So given our solution, I want to translate this without negatives because I'm in Z3. I only have 0, 1, and 2 to deal with, so I don't know what those negatives are. So negative 1, is that 1 or 2? So we can look at it a couple ways. This is 0, this is 1, this is 2, and then if we go in a clockwise direction, we'll, we'll, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, 6, etc. But if you go backwards, this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, etc. Right? So when I'm looking at negative 1, that's actually 2. So this is 0, I have 2. When I'm looking at negative 2, that's actually, that's actually positive 1. So it looks like I need to not do A. I'll need to hit the button, I need to hit the B button one or twice. The C button, the third button twice. The fourth button, none. The fifth button, twice. And the sixth button, once. Okay? Let's see if I have a 1, 2, 2, 0. 1, 2, 2, 2, 0. Is that what I have right now? 1, 2, 2, 2, 0, 0. Okay. So I don't hit the first button, right? How many times do I hit the second button? One, two, and the third button? One, two, fourth button? Zero. Zero. Fifth button? One, two, sixth button? Once? There you go. Lights out, zero turns. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, <clears throat> so um, as I was writing the test, I had uh, a, an application problem on the UPC code on written on the test, and then, but I had worked on this lights out game over the break, and so I thought maybe I'd give you a lights out problem instead. What? <laughs> Lights out problem will be on the test. Okay, your test is on Monday. So, yes, let's uh, let's take a look online. So uh, the test was supposed to actually supposed to be today, but we'll postpone it to Monday. We postponed it to Monday, so it'll be on on Monday. There's a review for exam number one in this week's time block, and uh, the review will have the outline for the test, and here's the outline. You should expect uh, five problems on the test. Problem number one are definitions and theory type questions and maybe proofs of something. Uh, you know, you had a quiz where you had to prove something's commutative or something like that. So that would go, if that was going to be on the test, that would go in problem number one. Problem number two, we'll talk about lines and planes, um, including finding equations of lines and planes and finding distances using projection and stuff like that. Uh, number three would be just a regular system of linear equations. Uh, actually, it won't be a regular <laughs> system of linear equations. It'll be a problem will, that will have you try to solve a system of linear equations. And uh, you can put an asterisk on that, and then I'll show you the review, and I'll show you what kind of problem I mean by a system of linear equations here. 
Uh, number four, we'll be asking you about spanning and linear independence. It'll ask you if a couple of vectors are linearly independent or three vectors are linearly independent. You should be able to solve for that. And what the span is of a set of vectors. And then the fifth one, the fifth one is an application and finite fields type of question. So the application will be the lights out problem. You'll have a lights out problem application there. So if you didn't understand what I did today, look over the video again and, uh, and look over the notes to see if you can understand it. I will have links to, the, to my, my program. Um, if you know how to program in Python, then you can look at the, the details of it. If you don't, too bad. Uh, and then there's also going to be a, uh, a, a system of linear equations uh, that you'll need to solve for over a finite field, over uh, Z2, Z3, Z5. It's going to be Z over uh, a, a, a prime number that will allow you to be able to solve for negatives. And then I don't think I'll go past 7. So Z5, Z3, Z5, or Z7 Z or something. All right, so that's the general outline. Oh, each of these will have multiple parts. So it's not just one definition or theory question. Number Problem number one will have uh, three or four parts to it. All right. Um, the review sheet is available now. I have a solution to the review sheet. I don't think I posted it yet. But here's your review sheet. So when I, so when I said the first uh, number, question number three will be a system of linear equations, you'll have a, a question that looks like this. You have a system of linear equations. You have uh, x, y, and z as your variables that you're solving for. But then there's other parameters thrown in there. In this case, there's a and b thrown in here. And then the questions are, for what values of a and b will give you no solution, will give you one unique solution, or uh, uh, an infinite number of solutions where you have one free variable or an infinite number of solutions where you have two free variables. So uh, here is a typical type of problem. And I think either on the review in chapter two or in 2.3 or 2.2 or whenever we did uh, systems of linear equations, they have problems similar to this. So you may want to take a look at that and see. Uh, linear independence and spanning would look kind of like this, where you have a handful of vectors. And with those handful of vectors, I can ask you to just pick two of them. Are they linearly independent? Or if you pick three of them, how can you tell if the three of them are linearly independent? So here are good thinking questions of, of how to approach this. So it's not just about the mechanics of solving for these things. It's about actually knowing what it is you're doing. So it's important that you know what you're doing. Uh, this last one over here uh, would be solving for systems over Z3 and Z, Z2. You might be asked to solve a system over Z5. So maybe you might want to take that very same equation and then solve for it over Z5 or something. You'll have different solutions if you solve for it over Z2 or Z5. And then I threw in this uh, IB, ISBN number business because that's how my exam kind of looked like last year. But then I, you know, I'm telling you, instead of don't focus on this type of problem, focus more on the, the lights out problem. OK? All right. Are there any questions? OK, uh, the STEM Center is having a STEM open day or something like that. And what they have is, do you have the passport? What they do is they give you a passport, and then if you go around to the table and listen to people talk, they'll sign you off. So STEM passport, and then they have a sign-off thing over here. And if you get this signed off completely and bring it to me on the day of the test, I will give you one extra point on the test. It's just one point. <laughs> one point out of 100. So that's not very much. But 
It's also a small incentive to go to the learning center and, and try to meet and people over there, yeah? Oh yeah, for the test, sorry. For the test, you get one sheet of notes and a calculator. Sheet, eight and a half by 11, back and front, whatever you want to put in there. So put a poem, put some pictures of the lights out, um, take a picture of somebody you like and put it there and then maybe that'll be inspiration for you to do well. Eight and a half by 11, a, a sheet. All right, see you guys on Monday. Good luck studying for the test. I have a passport just today.